Welcome, Eli Watney. Thank you. This is, uh, this is really cool. We are sitting in one of the oldest churches in Longview. This place has quite an amazing history, mm -hmm. but not too much history with Eli. No. How long have you been here? Uh, we have been here, uh, this November was our fourth year, so about four and a half years now, yeah. And this is your first senior pastorate. That's great, yeah, first lead pastoring position, yeah. Welcome to ministry. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> just kind of throw it in, yeah. What do you think? What do you, what's it been like the last four years? Well, it's been, a, it's been definitely a challenge, uh, especially coming in and not knowing anything about Longview. And I'm, I'm very much a proponent uh, and advocate for understanding culture where you're yeah. going. And so studying a little bit more about the culture of Longview, its history, good and bad, um, looking into that, looking into the history of our own church, looking into the history of our community, um, kind of starting to get a grasp of, of what that is. Um, but also, I mean, two years pre-pandemic, two years post-pandemic or during. Yeah. So I, I like to call it the tell of two halves, the pre-2020 and the after-2020. And uh, yeah, we're, we're kind of recovering through from that and just excited about what God has in the future. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, I've told our church many times that don't let our size determine our impact. Yeah. We may not be uh, one of the bigger churches in, in town, but that doesn't mean that we can't have a big impact where we're at. And just like what you were talking about with our principal, there's a local principal here um, that we just walked, I walked in and was like, hey, you know, I love the same kids that you do. And if you ever need anything, would you please let us know? And we would like to uh, give you all, all your staff a, a gift card to Starbucks and a thank you card. and. So we started um, a relationship with that. And right as we were about to call and go, hey, we have uh, all the thank you cards. And my wife was great. Uh, my wife actually prayed over the list and oh. pr prayed over each card as she hand wrote the thank you cards. And she did it specific to the person and to the grade or to what they did, whether they're a custodian, front desk, or uh, second or third grade teacher. And uh, she would write those out and we put those in and we called her like, hey, can we drop those off? And this is the first time really for this relationship. And she goes, oh my gosh, I'm so happy that you called. Yes, can you come in tomorrow? I was like, absolutely. And so- Yeah, the, the school's really resistant to work with sure. churches, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And uh, she goes, oh, can you come tomorrow? Yeah. And I'm like, yes. And so we went tomorrow and we went in her office and I handed her the, um, the bag with all the cards. And she just, <laughs> it was so awesome because she just put it off to the side. And she told me, you know, uh, this is the hardest school I've ever been a teacher or a principal at. I've been a principal for a while and this is the hardest school I've ever been at. And I was crying, talking to my mom on the way home. It was just the hard day that I had. And my mom said, well, is there anyone that you can talk to? Oh, that's so cool. And she goes, um, I get, emo I'm an emotional dude. You know me. <laughs> and she goes, yes, there was a pastor that said, if you ever need anything, Oh, that's so and she goes, so can you just pray with me? And I'm like, absolutely. <laughs> and we, <laughs> yes, and we've been praying together uh, just about every other week wow. ever, ever since. And it's been about three years. So uh, of that relationship built and yeah. What a so precious we, relationship. Yeah. I don't know if you know this, but that school, St. Hill School, mm -hmm. um, was where all the citywide ministry started. Mm. That's where Pastor's Prayer started, was the relationships that came out of a summer meals program that we did at St. Helens 30 years ago, mm. something like that. And uh, so that's always been a place that's, that's, that's had an open door for yeah. the religious community. I mean, right. we we've, we've really have had access there and you've had more access than we did. I mean, that kind of a relationship those kind of relationships are priceless, aren't they? I mean, yeah, it's one of those things going to work. The uh, just the power of one, the power of the ask yeah. is so huge. Um, I, I was telling another pastor here in town about that story and he goes, well, how did you do that? Like, yeah. I, I said, hi, <laughs> like, I just said, hi, like, is there anything we could do? And uh, just that ask, is there anything that we could do for you? And we may not have much, but if you have a request that we can meet, absolutely, we'd love to do that. And yeah. if we can't, then maybe we know somebody who can. And 
Um, so yeah, it's been a great relationship and I uh, heard some pretty intense stories about things that happened there and just uh, been praying about a lot for that school and the school has really grown in, in this time and um, yeah, I, I would like to think that us praying together has, par has part, of, part of that. Yeah, yeah, it's a great history. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that I was serving at a church up in the Snohomish area and God was really speaking to me. I, I know lead, lead pastoring was on my heart for a long time. Yeah. And I didn't go the quote unquote traditional route with like, you know, starting off as a youth pastor, children's pastor. Um, I, I just knew that that was always on my heart. And so I was working at a church on staff. I was their connections pastor, first impressions. And uh, we were growing, expanding church. And they were talking about some remodels that they were about to do on their church. Uh, because of the growth and they had to expand their building and all that and every time they talked about that I just didn't see myself in that building and it was really yeah. hard but uh, sat down talked to the pastor I'm like I think God's putting this on my heart that there's a transition he goes yeah he goes I, I agree and I affirm with that and our denomination reached out and was like hey have you ever heard of Longview they've been looking for a pastor and I'm like I have no idea where Longview is so my wife and I it was a Saturday morning we googled it and it was about three and a half hour drive and my kids were real little at the time. So we just threw our kids in the van. We drove down uh, literally from Marysville down to Longview. We drove around our church parking lot about three or four times, went up to Ocean Beach, used the bathroom at Bed Bath & Beyond and we went home. And literally my email back was like, well, hey, we went to the church. We didn't feel any weird, creepy vibes. <laughs> we open to the discussion a little bit further and we spent a weekend here and um, we met with people at restaurants. Uh, we met with another local pastor that my wife had a relationship with. And everyone we talked to, we met probably about 20 something people that we go to tables next to us and go, hey, tell us about Longview. We didn't tell them what we were doing. Yeah. And everyone to, to a T said, Longview's great. Just don't live in the Highlands. Yeah. Longview's great. <laughs> just don't live in the Highlands. Longview's a great place for kids, family. Just don't live in the Highlands. Yeah. And this is right where our church is. Right where we're at right now. And I was encouraged by that because I was like, you mean our church is surrounded by people that need Jesus? Yeah. Like we're surrounded. Like I love that our church is considered in the worst part of town. Uh, I, I don't think it's the worst part of town. I think it's the best opportunity in our town. Right. And um, there's people that need Jesus that need that opportunity to meet him. And so I was just really encouraged by that and was talking with a friend and he goes, so it's kind of like when Moses sent out the 12 spies, 10 came back with a bad report, but two were like, yeah, you know, all that's true, but we have God. Yeah. And I was like, absolutely. Yeah, all that's true. Like we live in a, in a rough part of town. All that's true, but we have God. And I fully believe that if God can have an outpouring uh, of his spirit and, and an outpouring of people meeting him and having a true authentic encounter with Jesus, mm -hmm. In this area, I think that a revival could break out in, in our whole community. And so that's been in my prayer is just for people to have an authentic encounter with Jesus, that their life yeah. can be radically transformed by meeting him. And what would that do through the rest of the community? That this is no longer the worst part of town because people have met Jesus. Right. And uh, what, what could that do? What impact could that do in, in our community? And that's really been my heart. I have a map in my office of the Highlands and St. Helens neighborhoods that I just really pray over. And uh, I've jokingly said, you know what, there's 84 something other churches <laughs> in the Longview Kelso area. That, that's great. They can have the rest. These are the only two neighborhoods I care about. Right. And I, I can spend the rest of my life in these two neighborhoods alone and be busy. And so that's my focus is just these two neighborhoods. I, I love these two neighborhoods. And so I'll walk, I'll pray. And, you know, it, it's, it's, it's something that is very challenging, um, can be discouraging with when you look at the scope and size of, um, of what's going on in our community. But at the same time, we serve a big God. Yeah. So. And everything in ministry is challenging. Yes. This isn't unique. I mean, we've all got a different challenges. The largest churches in town have challenges Absolutely. too. It yep. might be a little bit different, but sure. there's still challenges. Yeah. The book of James for me is just one of those books that, you know, they call it the Proverbs of the New Testament. And it's so short, but it's so impactful and powerful where 
uh, the sin of partiality, the sin of showing favoritism. Yeah. Um, do we treat people different by the way they look? Yeah. Do we treat others differently by the way they appear, um, by their actions, by the things that they say and do? And, you know, we've had people come into our church um, that lived on the streets all last night, or right. we've had people coming in, um, coming down off of whatever they injected or um, did the night before. Um, sometimes that's a disturbance, and other times it's not. Uh, our whole thing is just, is this a safe place uh, for you? And right. for us, we, we try to create a, a place where anyone can come in, any situation, any demographic, and this is a safe place for you. We love you, it's safe. Um, we've had a gal in our church, um, to me, she's, if you're gonna have a win, she, she is one of the bigger wins of our church. She had been coming here before I got here. And uh, she was on, on drugs and struggled with that addiction. And yeah. uh, one day decided, I need to get off. I need to get off of this and went to rehab. And while she was at rehab, she lost her housing. Oh, wow. And so a couple in our church uh, adopted her. And they adopted her. And when she got out, they um, were advocates for her. Wow. And got her in, like... For six months, they, out of their own pocket and other, other support from friends, they, they would put her up in a hotel every single night so she had a place to stay and a yeah. place to live. They would pick her up uh, and, and bring her to church. Uh, but for six months, they advocated for her and they finally found her some wow. housing. And even after that, even since there's been housing, she's their family. She does family events with them. They go to birthday parties. And she's been, she's been clean for three years. That's and so amazing. And to have somebody who, <laughs> I don't want to say she disrupted, but I mean, she was a little bit more vocal during church. Um, to have somebody go from that to seeing what she is now. Yeah. And now she still has issues from years and years of, of the um, drug abuse that she faced. But man, she is one of the happier people. And, but just to see the, the time and the effort that, um, that, that that couple in our church is one of my heroes, just to see... Uh, people practically living out what the Bible says to do and to take care of those who are in need, to reach out yeah. to them. And I, I'm sure, I know it has been difficult for them, but man, to see, to see what they've done in just that one person's yeah. life. And, and uh, that's one of our bigger, bigger wins in our whole church is just her. I love her and I love that family. Well, other pastors are going to watch this and uh, hopefully and just so they can get to know a little bit about who you are mm -hmm. and what makes you tick, what makes you excited, what frustrates you. All those things, you're just going to have to have coffee with them. That's all there is to it. Um, but they can do that personally with you. But I, I just, um, I really, I, I'm really excited about the fact that this neighborhood has a pastor that cares about him. That is the coolest. It would be so easy to have a pastor here who just wanted to do Sundays and maybe teach a Bible study. But Eli, you are actually making an impact on this community every day that you're here. Because mm. I know your door's always open. You can come, people can come anytime they want. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that's the kind of ministry you've always dreamed of. Maybe not here, right. but that type of accessibility to broken lives. Right. One of the things I like about these podcasts is if you didn't tell people what church you were at, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to tell what church you were from. I mean, all the churches, I think, in this community have a real heart for the people that they serve, the, from the biggest church to the smallest church. And every church has a pastor that has fallen in love with the ministry that's all around him at mm -hmm. the moment. I think that in so many ways, Eli, we are so fortunate to have you as a pastor in the city. And I know it's been hard at times. It's been a difficult road um, for everybody during COVID yeah. especially. But for you especially, this it's just been a difficult road here at Longview Foursquare. But I just, I, I hope you don't give up because we need you in this community. Um, we need your heart for the people here. This is, ministry is hard. It's full of challenges. It's difficult at times. Mm -hmm. But 
it's also, even though emotionally those were difficult things for you to talk about, those are the best parts of ministry too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Eli. It's been a huge blessing to sit down with you today. Thank you for, thank you for doing what you do and doing it with a smile and with your heart. All right, thank you. We really hope today's episode was helpful. You'll find more resources and content to connect with other community leaders by going to our website, cityservecowlets.org. So it's been a joy to walk with you and we'll see you soon.